Did you know that Guillermo del Toro's Hellboy movies were supposed to be a trilogy? Unfortunately, that third movie featuring the world's greatest paranormal investigator was just not meant to be, and it has become yet another of the legends of fandom. Greetings fanboys and fangirls, I'm Erodin of the Blockbuster Buster, and welcome to Legends of Fandom, where we talk about the fanboy films and shows that almost happen. Today, our story begins in the early 90s, during the creator-owned era of comics. Created by writer-artist Mike Mignola, Hellboy was a demon that accidentally came through a portal that was opened by Nazis and Rasputin during World War II. But he was rescued by soldiers, who nicknamed him Hellboy, and then adopted by occult expert Professor Trevor Broom, who raised him to be knowledgeable about the supernatural, and to use his amazing strength and skills against otherworldly beings who threaten our world, as an agent of the BPRD, the Bureau of Paranormal Research and Defense. Not only is Hellboy one of the most successful comic book characters not to be owned by DC or Marvel, but even though his comics are published by Dark Horse, the character himself is owned by his creator, Mike Mignola. His amazing gothic stories captured the imagination of one of the greatest filmmakers of our time, Guillermo del Toro, who shopped around a film adaptation of Hellboy to the studios for five years. And even though some of them were interested, they did have their own interesting stipulations. Like, for example, that a major star had to be casted in the main role, like Tom Cruise or Brad Pitt. And that Hellboy would be changed to a human that was from Hell and only changed into a big red demon when he was angry. You know, like the Hulk, but from Hell. <sighs> Thankfully, Del Toro revoked these caveats and kept on pitching the movie to different studios until finally Sony was the studio that greenlit the movie that he wanted to make. Under Del Toro's guard, we got two live-action theatrically released films and two animated straight-to-video features, starring the incomparable Ron Perlman as Hellboy. And believe it or not, all four of these releases are generally loved by the fanbase. Not only did the idea of Guillermo Del Toro producing and directing a third Hellboy movie feel like the natural progression of things, but it's also something that the fans desperately wanted. So, if this movie had happened, what would a third Hellboy movie be like? Unfortunately, an official script has never been made available to the public. But what we do have are tidbits of information from interviews that the cast and crew have done throughout the years. As you might recall, Hellboy 2 ends with Hellboy, Abe, and Liz quitting the BPRD. And our favorite demon detective finding out that not only is his lovely pyro girlfriend pregnant, but she is having twins. So Hellboy 3 would have picked up about 9 months later, with the birth of Hellboy and Liz's children. One of their sons would have been born a demon, and the other an angel. This interesting and somewhat shocking biological development would lead Hellboy to start investigating his own origins and discover that his mother was a nun from the 17th century, and his father was the first fallen angel, Lucifer Morningstar, better known as the Devil. Cut to 10 to 15 years later, as Liz and Hellboy are raising their boys in seclusion somewhere in Ireland, with Hellboy desperately trying to shield his family from the horrors of the world, and simultaneously trying to avoid his destiny as the Beast of the Apocalypse, and just retreat into the home life that he has worked so hard to build. Unfortunately, that is not an option, as Nimue, the Blood Queen, has returned to unleash her demonic forces on Earth and make the planet the way it used to be before it was infested by humans. And the irony of this is that in order for Hellboy to be powerful enough to stop her, he has to accept the destiny that he has avoided his entire life and become a new Rama, the Beast of the Apocalypse, as only the king with the flaming crown is mighty enough to challenge Nimue. But at the same time, this will force Hellboy to embrace his darkness something that he never wanted to expose his family to. This leads Hellboy, Liz, and the boys to go on a globe-trotting adventure to try and stop Nimue from rising to power, but there's just one tiny itty-bitty little problem. Liz and Hellboy are no longer with the BPRD, so their resources are lacking. And thus, they call upon the aid of their trusty friend, Abe Sapien, and Hellboy's first partner in the BPRD, Alice Monaghan. Presumably, this would have created some hilarious tension within the group, as Hellboy would have to work with the current lady in his life and the former. And if this is true, I guarantee you that Ron Perlman would have been amazing in these scenes. 
An eight track run? Yeah, well, one day the world's gonna realize it's a mistake. Eight track was the way to go. But former BPRD agents are not the only aid that Hellboy and Liz get as they also get a hand from the BPRD agent that never left the service because they kept his ghost on the payroll. Yes, that's right, the most condecorated BPRD agent in history. The one that Hellboy patterns himself after. His hero, Lobster Johnson. And here's the most tragic part of this story. According to both Guillermo del Toro and Mike Mignola, if Hellboy 3 had moved forward, they both wanted Lobster Johnson to be played by Bruce Campbell. Plans were even made for a third Hellboy animated feature that would have included Lobster Johnson voiced by Campbell, but the project never moved past a teaser at the end of Hellboy Blood and Iron. Campbell did voice Lobster Johnson for a DLC for the Hellboy Science of Evil video game, but that also was cancelled. While that would have been one of the most perfect castings in the history of filmmaking, my God did fate not want it to happen. There are no details about how Hellboy 3 would have ended, outside of some scattered rumors. What we do know, thanks to both Guillermo del Toro and Ron Perlman, is that this was supposed to be their last Hellboy movie and was supposed to conclude the story. So based on that, and the fact that the story is primarily based on Darkness Calls, The Wild Hunt, and The Storm and the Fury, it's safe to assume that Hellboy 3 would have ended like the comic book storyline, with Hellboy sacrificing himself to save his friends, his family, and the world. And now we get to the most important question in this video. Why didn't this happen? Well, as I illustrated earlier, getting the Hellboy movies greenlit was always an uphill battle which was exacerbated when the first movie underperformed at the box office. Thankfully, it killed on home video, which is what prompted Sony to produce the two straight-to-video animated features, which also did well. But after that, Sony was pretty much done with Hellboy, and Universal stepped in as Hellboy 2's distributor, with the belief that what the second movie lost at the box office would make up during the home release. Sadly, that would not be the case, because by the time Hellboy 2 came out on DVD, the home media market had changed and had started to shift towards digital and streaming. So greenlighting a third Hellboy movie became a considerable risk, put into further doubt by the fact that Hellboy 3 was described by many as having a larger, grander, and more epic scope than the first two movies, prompting many to estimate that Del Toro would need somewhere around $200 million to achieve his vision. So yeah, there was no way that any studio in their right mind would greenlight such a movie. Thankfully, the producers of the first two films didn't give up on it, and continued looking for somebody to pick up the franchise and distribute the movie. And it took a few years, but eventually they found Hellboy 3 a home with Summit Entertainment. But by then, things had changed. Ron Perlman felt that he was too old to endure the hours of makeup and physical demands of the role and Guillermo del Toro had gone from a fan-favorite director to an Academy Award-winning A-list filmmaker that was very high on demand. So del Toro was now too busy to make Hellboy 3 and Perlman was not willing to make the physical sacrifice for any director other than del Toro. As a compromise, del Toro considered releasing Hellboy 3 in comic book form, but Mike Mignola vetoed the idea, as he had already endured years of people complaining that his comics are too confusing, so adding a whole other continuity to the franchise would just aggravate the situation. Besides, Mignola has always been adamant that the movies and the comics remain separate. And I quote, The movies are Guillermo's thing, the comics are my domain. This led to Summit producing a reboot instead. Now, by this point, some of you might have noticed that some of the concepts from Hellboy 3 actually carried over to the reboot, but it was not as good as the first two movies, or the animated ones for that matter, as Hellboy 2019 was a critical and financial failure. And the least we say about it, the better. But not all hope is lost, as another reboot is on the way based on the Crooked Man limited series. Whether it sinks or swims, only time will tell. In the case of Hellboy 3, I feel very comfortable not asking if any of you are happy with the way things turned out, as it is very clear that nobody is. Not only is the reboot universally hated, and the producers opted for another reboot as opposed to a sequel, but to this very day, both Guillermo del Toro and Ron Perlman get questions about Hellboy 3 
to the point that this particular legend of fandom has developed its own devoted fan base. So in light of that, I'm going to change my concluding questions. What were your hopes for Hellboy 3, aka the conclusion of the Guillermo del Toro Hellboy trilogy? And while we're on the subject, what are your hopes for this upcoming Hellboy reboot? Feel free to let me know in the comment section below, as we have once again reached the end of this video. So, do you know of any fanboy films or shows that almost happened? Feel free to let me know at erod at inbox.com. And who knows, your suggestion might end up being the subject of the next Legends of Fandom. Until then.